Nigeria has lost an estimated billion dollars in the first quarter of this year due to a high oil theft in Africa's largest economy. The nature of Nigeria's oil refineries have, according to sources, made it possible for oil theft to, be, to thrive along with weak security. Mexico, in order to reduce oil theft, led a comprehensive military crackdown. The strategy involved collaborating between the military, National Guard, and local authorities to perform surveillance and catch thieves red-handed. Can that be replicated here in Nigeria. Joining us to discuss further, uh, Damila Akimbami, uh, Senior Manager and Client, Senior Manager, Clients Industries at uh, Deloitte. Damila, good morning to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Can you speak to the impact of the continued oil theft that we've seen here in Nigeria? Good morning, Rotus. Thank you for having me. Yes, so the oil theft that we've been seeing, I've been experiencing in Nigeria, I mean, it, it has significant um, implications for the country. I mean, the main thing is the reduction in oil revenue. And when you're talking about oil revenue, you have to look at two factors that are at play. One is the price, one is the production. So those two factors come about to give you um, the revenue. So yes, oil prices have been um, trading above $100. I mean, year to date, the average is about $110 per barrel. But if you look at um, the production aspect, our Nigeria is producing about 1.1 six million barrels per day, according to OPEC's um, monthly oil market report for June. So on one hand, oil prices are trading above the budget benchmark of about, uh, what, $70, $73 per barrel. Meanwhile, we're producing significantly lower than the budget bench benchmark of about 1.8 million barrels per day. So basically, the oil price gains that we would have enjoyed are being offset by these lower production levels. And what we're going to see is a reduction in oil revenue. And because Nigeria depends on oil for, I mean, over about 70% of um, fiscal revenue is getting from oil earnings. So definitely, we're going to see some shortfalls in um, government revenue this year. And what that means is that to plug that wider fiscal deficit that we're going to see or call, you will need to borrow more. And in the case for Nigeria, in a situation where, I mean, global interest rates are increased, in, um, domestic interest rates are increasing. Borrowing at this time obviously has significant implications. We've heard all the reports about Nigeria's um, debt repayments exceeding what the government is earning in terms of revenue. So Nigeria is in a fiscally precarious situation, if I can put it that way. And aside from the reduction in all revenue, once government revenue is reduced, I mean, you start to see um, salary arrears. I mean, the, the, the accretion even to the fact the monthly statutory allocation is, reduces. And that means that the government doesn't have enough funds to invest in capital projects which are required for the growth and development of the economy. Thanks, uh, Dami. So can we learn from Mexico and what, what they did? Oh, yes. So um, presently, what Mexico is doing, I mean, the, the government is engaging various stakeholders. So it's involving the military, collaborating with host communities and um, security operatives. So um, bear in mind that oil theft in Nigeria is not something new. I mean, this is something that has been ongoing for years. And I believe that the government has a basically put in place various measures to curb this menace. So, because it's one of the factors that has led to our reduction in production levels. So, all theft, pipeline, vandalism, no investment in the sector. So, I believe that, I mean, collaboration with all the stakeholders and also even addressing what is making this all theft lucrative in Nigeria, at getting down to the grassroots of this problem definitely would help to address this issue. So, yes, there are lessons to learn from Mexico. And I believe that the government on its part has been doing that and just intensifying the efforts and ensuring that whatever incentives, whatever is driving this, this um, event, this issue to keep going on for as long as it is, needs to be addressed significantly and time is of the essence. I want to move to, uh, to Kenya. What do you make of this you know, fuel surcharge that the cargo airlines are applying to their, their rates? Yeah, so the fuel surcharge um, is being is like an extra um, fee or cost being added um, to the cost of fuel by the airline. And I mean, because of what is happening to the global oil price, we um, basically everyone is being affected. So what we are seeing right now is that there's an increase, obviously, in fuel costs and all the airlines are struggling. And it's not just even the airlines that are being affected. Everyone is being affected. So once you see an increase in an impute cost or raw material, what tends to happen is that the manufacturer or the business owner tends to ship that cost burden to the consumer where it's applicable or maybe even share the cost with, um, the, with, the, with the consumer. But in this situation, obviously, we are seeing that push I mean, that increase in, um, we're going to say that increase, obviously, in cargo um, fares, and even, even in Nigeria, we're already beginning to see um, domestic airlines, the ticket fares in 
increase in price. So what this means is that obviously, um, obviously it's inflationary. So both the manufacturer, both the consumer, everyone is affected. And if we start to see that increase in inflation, in, in ticket fares, in cost of cargo, it might affect the volumes of, 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 of cargo being freighted, being carried from one location to another. And what that means is that obviously log logistics and distribution, supply chain disruptions kick in, and that could lead to strategies. And once there are strategies, obviously, again, that fuels inflation. And look at what happened in Kenya. Kenya's inflation increased for that about 7.9% in June. Also, like I mentioned, it's not just a Kenya specific problem. Everyone is, is experiencing this problem. In Nigeria, the inflation rate increased to 18.6, even oh, Ghana to 29.8. So definitely this increase in the fall surcharge or this addition of the surcharge to um, fall costs would definitely be inflationary and would affect business all around. Thanks, Dami. I want to talk about protests and this planned um, NLC uh, strike, or, the, or rather protest that is supposed to protest the closure of um, Nigeria universities with respect to this you know, long, ongoing dispute between ASU, Academic Staff Union of Universities, and the federal government of Nigeria. How disruptive do you think this could be? Oh, uh, well, it's definitely going to be disruptive. I mean, once there's any um, strike involved because it affects um, economic and business activities. So definitely it's going to be disruptive. Definitely it's going to have negative implications on output and productivity. I mean, if, if it leads to um, shutdown of, of businesses and what have you, definitely the economy stands to lose. And there's always the risk of it I mean, escalating into social unrest. And that, that, that obviously has its own implications. So if this happens, definitely it could it could it could have um, some severe implications on businesses it could have severe implications on the economy i mean every day if there's any strike or disruption to that one businesses are not making as much money even as the, the government officials even uh, even private owners everyone is being affected so definitely it it could be disruptive if 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 it escalates further and Dami, uh, very quickly, because we're about to go, less than a minute, the impact of students uh, being idle for, for so long, um, how, how bad can things get there? Well, I mean, right now, the, um, students have been at home for, I mean, how many months right now? So this, and bear in mind that these are the people that are going to be the leaders in 10, 15 years from now. So definitely, I mean, the quality of education is being affected. Also, the outcome of what we are producing in the labor market would definitely be affected. And it, it, it has its, its spillover effect. And bear in mind that also like this old adage that an ideal hand, we know what that means. So definitely it could also lead to increased social unrest, increased crime rates, unemployment rates are going to increase. So everything has an, an overall impact on the economy. So with the students being at home for so long, it definitely will affect the education system. And bear in mind that it feeds into other sectors. I mean, these are the people that are going to go into manufacturing, they're going to go into tech, they're going to go into law and what, what have you. So what are we going to be producing? Whatever we invest now is definitely going to have an effect 10 years, 20 years from now in the future. Dami Lola Akimbami, Senior Manager, Clients and Industries, Deloitte. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate your time.